Well, we're up here today on the Benny's Lake at the fantastic Dren and Lindome Lakes. We're sat on peg 57 for anyone that knows the lake, just um, past the main arm of the lake on peg 60. And hopefully, especially with this sun out, we'll be doing a little bit of shallow fishing. First time these rigs have been out this year, so it'd be nice to get some elastic pulled out, catch a few of the great big F1s which are in this lake, talk you through all the little hints and tips with regards to that, about the rigs, the feeding, and the little changes you're looking for, especially when you're targeting these F1s in a bit of an unusual lake really, especially with the depth. So there's a few little things to look out for, little, little changes to your more traditional F1 fishing. So we'll run through rigs, then we'll have a quick talk about bait, nothing fancy today bait wise, just going to be fishing pellets and hopefully um, we'll get dragged in a few times off of these, these fish, it'd be nice to get some elastic rips out so quickly on to rigs and then we'll get cracking. Rig wise for me, um, there's two ways going about it on here, you're not allowed to overshot your rig so that's an important thing to know, every rig you have must flow when it's at its stop so I, if you're fishing a jigger and it hits a stop the rig's got to keep floating so just bear that in mind because I think um, those that fish for F1s now know that sometimes overshotting rigs can be deadly and there's definitely an art to it but here we're not allowed to do it so rather than talk you through a method what doesn't really come into play in the matches we'll stick to what what we can fish in the opens and hopefully run you around that so first rig is a jigger so that's just free running on a piece of 020 line, nice stiff line so it, it falls with a hole of a jigger. And that's a 0.4 Drennan inline dibber and all I've done is cut the stem off and sanded it down so that it's just a free running rig basically. I'm not a big fan of the traditional style jiggers with a big hole in the middle because I think your rig just runs too, too freely. You slap your rig and all of a sudden your rig's already 8 to 10, 12 inches deep. With this, the line will actually trap because there's no loading in the float itself. So your line will trap, so you lift that pole above the float, then it'll cock, and then you can lower your rig. So I'm always dictating the depth, so that's why I go for him. Just need to put my little stop on above, so I just put that 8 inches from my thing. Again, just to keep in line with open match rules, what we'll fish to, just to keep everything in context with Lindo. Elastics, the yellow Drennan bungee, first time he's been out for me this year really, fishing for some big F1s, you're fishing for a bigger weight so it's just a case of getting on with the job, they're starting to pull a bit harder as well so we can step everything up a bit. Shot in to begin with, just a little bulk, I think that's four number eights, just next to my hook length knot, down to a three inch hook length, a 013 suplex floor of carbon, to an 18 T911 and just a little bait band for banding a four mil pellet. Nice and simple, easy, but it does the job. Another nice important point, the elastic is in one of the double two kits, so it's probably half the amount of elastic that's in the standard kits. So the fish are just going to pop up that little bit closer, allow me to net them that bit easy and it'll speed everything up a little bit. Especially on here, so like we've fished matches on here before, anyone that's been here will relate to it. People have caught £200 and been last in the section or not won a penny in the height of summer. So it is a case of making the most of them fish while they're feeding. Next rig, with it being early on in the season, I didn't want to go to all guns blazing kind of thing and just set up a jigger and maybe a really shallow fixed rig. So same elastic and everything, 018 main line, and this is a crystal caster in a point three just allow me to fish that little bit deeper than I would do normally for them. I can spread that shot out if I wanted to feed through the water a bit more, but it just gives me a bit more scope than, than the traditional sort of dibber style shallow rigs. Nice little bristle on that, so as it cocks and my bait's going through, I can get any readings if the fish are sat above the bait. If I'm getting bites before my rig's settled, it tells me the fish are above the depth that I've set this rig to, and I can adjust it accordingly. Same sort of thing, little bulk of number nines to start off with, might move them depending on what's going on, if I find that I want to string them out to just let my bait fall through, but we'll play that by ear seeing what's going on. Down to the same hook length, 3 inch of 013 to a size 18 T911 in a band. That's what you got. And then my last rig, the original 
little dread and dibber in a point two, nice and light, not going to make too much noise because if I'm catching on this rig, I'm going to be slapping my rig a lot more, making that noise. And I'd rather the fish turn on the pellet. I want the pellet to make more noise than the float, so then the fish are going to home in on the splash of the pellet rather than the splash of the float. Same again, eight inch lash, bulk of three number tens and a three inch up length of 013. One point is, I've not set up a million rigs today. Because I'm pleasure fishing, I can move a float up and down and change my line accordingly. If it was match day, I might have three or four of the little dibber rigs at two, three inch intervals and probably a couple of the deeper rigs. One key point is that eight inch line limit. Realistically for F1s, you want to fish as short a line as you can get away with because then you're more direct and you're going to get more bites. They're just going to pull the pole over basically. Here the rule is eight inch. So I don't want to be any longer than that because in my head already that's too long. So I need all my rigs on that minimum line length limit really unless it's a bright hot flat day then some days i might extend that line to keep my pole away but as you can see we've got a nice ripple on so bear in mind if it was a match day i'd be setting four five six shallow rigs however many you feel you're going to need to keep in touch with them fish obviously it's a bit deeper late today so you, you probably want six or eight rigs and um, so yeah keep that in mind in terms of your lash your lash length so important to get to get them fish to hook themselves and that's it really they're my rigs um everything does a does a job it's there for a purpose so we'll quickly run through bait nothing special with regards to that and then we'll get started and hopefully we'll snare a few right in terms of bait for me f1 shallow fishing is based around three baits pellets maggots and casters so we'll run through all three of them in that order. Pellets are great for me, especially early in the season when the fish are just waking up and wanting to feed. Make a load of noise, you can feed them nice and tight. But the brilliance of them is as well, they give you a line underneath them. Like, for example, not so much on here today, but on the other lakes where it's a bit shallower, you can catch them underneath on the bottom to start off with before they come up. Here, you've always got the option of throwing a feeder and things, but it's eight, 10 foot deep. I don't want to be fishing a pole on on here on the bottom so i'd always opt for a feeder and um, but again that's the beauty of pellets you've got the scope in terms of you can catch underneath them next one is maggots and they're great for me later on in the year once they've been clattered all all through the season or just as one that turn from summer into autumn is the brilliance of them is how slowly they fall just give that them fish time to see them when they might be a bit cautious, a bit wary, they've, they've had a bit of a kick in all through the summer and they just can't resist it really. <laughs> nice slow falling bait. And then the last one, casters. That for me is my go-to in the height of summer. You can be really aggressive with them, they make a load of noise, feed a nice big area and you can hold a load of fish in your peg. And the, for me, casters are a brilliant bait when they're that bit older, that big, bit wiser, bit bigger F1. See, this lake's changed a lot in the last 18 months. It, it was almost, you'd come here, whatever match it was throughout the warmer months, you would have four or five bags of four mil pellets, blast them in, and you'd catch one every single chuck in. But now, they've gone from those sort of pound, pound and a bit fish, to they're absolutely massive, the two, three, four pound fish. There's probably some even bigger than that in here, to be honest. So you have to be a bit more careful with your baits throughout the years, and it will change as you progress throughout that throughout the months. However, early season pellets are always a, a nice safe bet. You, can, you can't really go wrong with it. You're always going to catch an amount of fish on pellets. So if you're ever unsure, just stick to them. So we've just gone for four mils, just fishery four mils with a Coppins pellet here at Lindam. Nice size. I've not put any oils or anything on them. I don't, I don't want to affect how they fall too much. If I do find I'm having a few problems with them floating and things, I can just dampen them. But for me, especially with it's early in the year, the wind's blowing into me. I'm not too bothered if another one sticks and floats for a second. So they're what we've gone for. That's all we've got on the tray. Nothing too too technical. And then while we're on the topic of bait, catapults. So these are the Waggler range ones from Drennan. A nice thickish elastic. The beauty of using a slightly heavier elastic for me is you're going to group your bait a lot tighter. So when I go coaching with people, I try to relate it to this. If you ask someone to throw a ball 
five meters we're going to be able to do it very accurately because it's within a comfortable range for themselves if you then ask that same person to throw a ball 50 meters your accuracy is going to suffer a little bit because you're maxing out to a sort of distance you can reach same principle with this so i have a few catapults in my bag and that's one i like to opt for for pole range we're going to be fishing 13 meters hopefully today we might have to go a bit further if we're a bit wary but that's a nice catapult that you can do a bit of everything with anywhere from sort of seven eight meters all the way out to 16 meters if i do find light on a waggle and a bomb and things i'm going further i'll just step it up but a little bit of advice for you in terms of what catapults to pick we've got the bait there the only other thing we might have is a few red four mil pellets on that side tray and um, just as a hook bait just to contrast the color of the feed baits we're feeding there just a four mil dynamite baits robin red absolutely brilliant and um, just as it's falling it's, it contrasts so they might pick it out a bit quicker but we can have a play with that as we go along so i'm going to turn around get some bait fed and hopefully you'll join me when we're playing a few fish and we can talk you through what's happening on the day right so we've been feeding the peg for probably the last five ten minutes so this is first drop starting rig wise and we'll start on the jigger because it gives me the most scope in terms of my depth i can see where those fish are at and help me keep in touch with them so i'm just going to feed the peg before i go out see how the rollers are set nice and high just keep everything smooth turn the rig over you see how the float will lay flat till i pick the pole up and then everything's running then so slap that rig make a bit of noise if fish want to be that high we'll catch one as expected though this early in the session we haven't had an indication so i can feed my bait and then just lower lower my rig with that bait and all i'm trying to do is just stay in touch with it oh so i had something just dink the rig then so All I'm doing is keep an eye on my float, see if anything pulls my rig to the side or moves my bait. Another little little sign on the float, so I just keep might just lift my pole tip a bit higher. There's no, oh, there's one. So let him swim out your peg. Feed your bait to keep them next ones happy. Bring him in. See, rollers are nice and high, so I'm not having to bend down. Just help keep that pole tip. That last six, lovely. Wait a minute. So that's his first F1 of the day. Just double check where he's hooked. Corner of the top lip, so perfect. Pop him back. And that was quite a long way down, right towards the bottom end of the rig. So this drop, it tells me there's no point wasting the time slapping the rig. I might as well just lower him straight in and get to the area where the fish are rather than spending forever working all that depth. So put your float in. And straight away I'm probably going to go to around half that depth because that's the area I was getting the odd sign, the odd indication. Feed my bait. And I'm always trying to feed this side of my pole. So we're going to sit under my pole tip. I don't want to be feeding past because then you'll find your fish sit beyond your pole tip. And as the day goes on, they just get harder and harder to catch. So I felt a little dink on the pole again then. So just lower him down again. It was right towards that bottom part of the rig around now where we had that indication. Well, we had that bite, so. Mm. 
another thing about pellets, as you can see today, that wind's getting up. And because of the weight of them, you can still feed them where you want to in your peg. So again, no signs there. Again, if I'm not getting any signs, it's it's not end of the world. We've only been fishing five minutes. And just work them depths again. The thing with the jigger is, because they just pull the elastic out, oh, hold on then. Lay him in. Because they just pull the elastic out, just because you're getting no bites doesn't mean the fish are deeper. Your bait just might not be in that window where those fish are sat. It feeds just to settle them in for that next drop. We're always trying to think about that next fish. Especially on this lake when it can be a numbers game. It's well worth staying in touch with them. Here we go. This is one of the big the big ones that we that we like on here. They're the ones you're after, and great big three pound things. Lovely fish. Slap them over, just pick him up and straighten everything out. In honesty, I probably don't really need to do that. Oh. So you can see then already the pegs changed, so that worked out quite well for us how shallow that fish was. I'm not going to put this jigger down and pick my shallower rig up as yet because it might just be a one-off but it's some, definitely something to bear in mind see that elastic's just working perfect plenty soft enough but when he's under my feet I'm still in control I'm not having to go too deft on the puller kit nicely in the top lip bang where we want them. So, I'll just swap this rig over. So already in my head I'm kind of thinking that deep shallow rig with the little um, crystal cast is almost going to be redundant today it's very well that how shallow we are already one's just swirled in the bait it's mad really it's, it's only the middle of my hatch it, it shouldn't really be this good so again so I'm just going to use this rig slightly differently oh, now wrapped him around drops out yeah got away with it got away with it it's all summer all winter shipping out deep rigs rather than shallow rigs so three slaps and then with this hold your pole t tight to your float all we're trying to do is get them to pull the elastic out there we go you see how much quicker that bite was than with the jigger. Too many people come on this lake and are obsessed with jiggers or in the big qualifiers where it's loud, overshotting rigs and things. So sometimes just that normal rig can be the best way. So even though we've caught one every cast, we've caught one this drop a lot faster than them last two on the jigger. Because of how good that is, I know that's roughly the right depth. So what I'm going to do is just measure it on my side tray. So if I have a little calamity with anything, I know what depth I'm catching at. So on these trays, there's numbers, so you can just use that to relate to that. So that is exactly 40 centimetres deep, so that's probably what, 
14 inch, 15 inch. Not fed that time, always remember to feed. Before you go out, just settle them in. Hopefully then you'll get one quicker. One key thing is not to come too close though. So all that you find then is you'll catch an odd one or you'll have a little run, then you'll sit 10 minutes and it'll slow down. Whereas if I can keep them at a nice comfortable distance, say, Generally on here, I'll fish 11 metres. If it's, if it's a bit later on, or today it's quite early in March, I wasn't quite sure where they'd be. I've just gone to 13. And then the other side thing is being aggressive in terms of hook sizes. And so rather than fishing a, an 18, step it up to a 16, or if it's ridiculous, put a 14 on. Just means you're gonna pull out a less fish. So, I'm going to catch this one, then remember to feed this time as well before I go out. Hopefully you'll see the difference with it. Quickly run back to the van, get a bit of ground bait, mix that up as a slop, so we can run you through that style of it, because it'll be a little bit different to this. Go. see how much quicker he was that time so we'll stick this one in the net hopefully run up the bank tweak a few things and then we'll talk about that aspect of it because I, I didn't expect it to be as good to be honest folks it's gonna be a video on keeping in touch with him changing the as you can see, it's probably a little bit solid. And this one's just running me ragged. You see, kind of the days on here where we used to just sit back and lift the pole up, no breaking down. The far too big for that now. It's just a case of making sure you land as, as many of them you hook as you can. There you go, another two pound F1. Nice fish. So I'm going to run up the bank, get a few bits out of the van, tweak a few things, and I'll run you back through it all when we get cracking again.